Okay, so moving on to the next problem, Ch chapter two. We want to do problem, um, <clears throat> let's see, problem 30. Okay, so the brakes on your car can slow you at the rate of 5.2 meters per second. So the acceleration, and because uh, it slows you down, which means that uh, the acceleration should be negative. So negative 5.2 meter per second square. If you are going 130, uh, 37 kilometer per hour and suddenly see a state trooper, what is the minimum time in which you can get your car on the, the 90 kilometer per hour speed limit? So in other words, your initial velocity is one third, uh, you know, 133, one thir uh, 137 kilometer per hour and you want to bring it down to the state limit, which is 90 kilometer per hour. Okay, you're asked to find what is the time that's required for you to break, uh, you know, to, uh, to slow your car down. So how do we do this? So first of all, because uh, your acceleration is given in SI unit, we need to convert the velocities into the SI unit. So let's do this. So we have 137 times 1,000 divided by the hour. So one hour is 3,600 seconds. So after you do the conversion, your initial velocity should be 38.05 meter per second. And you do the same thing, that's 90 times 1,000, that becomes meters, divided by the time, 3,600 3, seconds. So you get 25 meter per second. So now you have initial velocity, you have the, uh, the final velocity, you have the acceleration. How do we find the time? So based on the equations of motion, the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. You have this, which is 25, so we're just plugging the equation. You have 25, and your initial velocity is 38.05, and then your acceleration, because you know you have to actually manually put a negative sign in front of it, because it says it slows it down, it slows the velocity down, which means that the acceleration has to be negative. So it's negative 5.2 and then times your time. So after you work out the problems, you should get your time. The answer should be 2.5 seconds. Okay, so that's basically a very standard problem. You, you're given the initial and final velocity, you're giving the acceleration, how much time uh, you know, is required to change from one velocity to another. Okay, so now we're going to do the next problem. We're going to do, let's see. So, so I'm not going to graph it, uh, you know, graphing it, uh, so, so that's your problem 44. I'm going to erase this. <clears throat> All right, problem 44. When startled, an armadillo will leap upward. Suppose it rises 0.5, uh, 0.544 meters in the first 0.2 seconds. So you have armadillo, and when startled, it moves to that point, and the height, the height that say is 0.544 meters, and the time it, uh, that it took is, let's say, 0.2 seconds, okay? What is the initial speed as it leaves the ground? So there's initial velocity, that's called a VI, we don't know, and it jumps up, and then, uh, so what is the speed at the height at this point? So at this point, what is the final height at that point? And then how much higher does it go? So it does not, the armadillo does not stop there. It's going to continue and then until you reach the highest point, okay? So whenever you do this kind of problem, you want to make your, you want to define your coordinates. Now by convention, you want to define that, you know, your ground is associated with the zero. So I'm going to use my Y, so let's say my Y, and it happens to be initial height. So my initial height is at zero meters. And then at the intermediate height, so that we call that YF, it is at 0 .5, uh, 0.5, Four, four meters. So in that case, we have the we have the uh, displacement. You have the initial height. You have the final height. You have the time. And we don't know. We don't know our initial velocity. We don't know our final velocity. So 
how do we find this? Uh, how do we do this problem? Now we also recognize that when it jumps off, there is acceleration acting on the amadino, which is the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, gravitational acceleration. So there is acceleration which we call that a, and your a here is equal to negative nine point a is going downward. Okay. So in that case, you have your acceleration, you have the position, you have the time, so that becomes very straightforward to calculate your initial velocity because based on the equations of motion, the final height, the final, the final height is equal to initial height plus initial velocity times time, and then plus one half acceleration times t squared, right? So this is equations of motion, and that's, let's see uh, if we have uh, enough information to use this uh, equation. So final height is 0.544. Initial height is zero. Initial velocity we do not know. But the time is given, which is 0.2 seconds. And then plus uh, one half, so I'm just keep that plus, and then one half, and your acceleration, your acceleration is negative 9.8. So it's negative 9.8, and then times time squared. So your time is 0.2 squared. So you can see that we have all the information except the VI, that, which is unknown. So after you plug in the numbers, you should find that your initial velocity is basically equal to 3.7 meter per second. And that's how you find that, use, utilize this equation, okay? So now we find this initial velocity to be 3.7 meter per second, and then you'll also find what is that velocity at that point. Then that becomes, again, very easy because you can use the one of the equations of motion that associate uh, the final velocity to the initial velocity using this equation. We know that the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. You can see that I, I, you, I keep my uh, plus here, but then when I plug in the A, my A here is negative 9.8. A. So everything is consistent, okay? So the final velocity, we do not know. Any initial velocity you just found to be 3.7, and your acceleration is the uh, gravitational acceleration, so it's negative 9.8, A, and then times the time, which is 0.2. So after you plug in the numbers, punch it into the calculator, you get 1.7 meter per second, okay? So you can see that initially, the amadillo is m moving upward at the three point, uh, you know, with the initial velocity that 3.7 meter per second, and after you jump to this height, the velocity now becomes uh, 1.74 meter per second. And you also find how much higher it can go up, okay? What is the addition height from this point? So we need to recognize that you know, when the armadillo, when it moves up, it does not move up all the way. You know, they come to a, a point that it will stop. What is the situation when it comes to a stop? That would be that when the velocity, when it reaches the highest point, when, everything, when, every, when every object reaches the highest point, it means that it loses its velocity. So the velocity at that point, the velocity here is zero. So now we're going to actually, instead of taking this as your final velocity, we're going to take this as your initial velocity. So, so I'm going to do it like that. So you have this, this is your fi final velocity, and this is your initial velocity and experience the acceleration. So you want to find the distance. What is the total distance? So in that case, what we can do is that we can use another, another, equation, so, uh, another equation of motion, which is the final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared, and then plus the two times the acceleration, and then times the, uh, uh, the displacement. So in that case, the final velocity Remember, this now becomes your final velocity, which is zero. So you have the zero square that's equal to initial velocity. And your initial velocity here is here. So that's 3.7, 3.7 square. And then plus two times your acceleration, which is negative 9.8, and then times your delta y. So after you work out the, uh, you know, work out the, uh, the, uh, the, the numbers, you'll find that your delta y your delta y basically is equal to 
eight meters in reference to your initial point. So the separation from this point to that point is 0.698 meters. And the problem asks you to find what is the additional distance that the Amadina would jump up to. So, so your y, so basically, so you should, you should, so the final answer would be that 6.98 minus, minus this height, which is 0.544. So you get, after you do, so you would move up 0.154 meters higher. Okay? So that is, Problem 44, okay? So now we're going to move on to another problem that is problem 48. So I'm going to erase this again. Let's see what the problem is about. <clears throat> a hulan throws a stone vertically downward with initial speed of 15 meters per second from the roof of a building. So this is, let's say this is a building, this is the roof of the building. And the hulan is throwing the, a stone vertically downward, okay? Now the keyword here is downward. So you should, need, so you should associate that 12 meters per second with the initial velocity. In addition to that, because it's throwing downward, you have to put a negative sign in front of it, in front of it to indicate the direction. Okay, so initial vertical, the initial velocity is ne uh, negative 12 meters per second from the roof of the building. That is 30 meters above the ground. So if again, if we use this, in, so this is your ground, then this height is your uh, 30 meters above the ground. Okay. And uh, so you can call that initial height is at 30 meters per second because that, so everything is consistent. This is your initial velocity. This is the initial height where the, uh, where the stone is located. And this, of course, is your final height, which is the ground or reference height. How long does it take the stone to reach the ground? So it's going to come in down. And how much time? You're asked to find the amount of time that, uh, you, know, that you go from, from the 30, meter, um, 30 meters above the ground to the ground. And then you're, you're asked to find what is the speed at the impact. So you want to find the final velocity, okay? So during this time, this is a stone that's, going, uh, that's being thrown downward. So you can see that when it's thrown downward, it means that it, it, ha it does come with the initial velocity that's non-zero. So it has negative 12 meters per second. And we also know that it experienced acceleration, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So you have the separation. You have the acceleration and you have the, uh, uh, the initial velocity. So to find the time becomes very straightforward. You can just use this equation. The final, the final position is equal to initial position plus initial, initial uh, velocity times time and then plus one half a t squared. So this is the original equation. Then we're going to plug in the numbers uh, you know, based on the problem. So the final high here is zero and the initial high is 30, me 30 meters. Initial velocity is negative 12, and then times the time, which is unknown, and then plus one half, and your acceleration, your acceleration is negative 9.8, and then times t squared. So you can see that what you have here is a quadratic uh, equation, and with a t that's being unknown. Now, if you remember, if you have a quadratic equation that says ax squared plus bx plus c, that is equal to zero, the solution for x is this. So your x is equal to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac and then divided by 2 times a. Okay? So if you look at this, our x here is our t and then you, what is our a? Our a, so let me just re, uh, rearrange this so you have the negative 4.9 t squared and then negative 12 t plus 30 and the whole thing is equal to zero. So we identify our A is negative 4.9, our B is 12, uh, negative 12, and our C is uh, positive 30. So you can see that your T, the time, is basically equal to negative B, so negative that becomes negative, negative that becomes positive 12, 
plus or minus, and then b squared, so negative 12 squared, and then minus 4, and then your a, your a is negative. You can see that uh, there's a lot of negative signs here, so you want to be a little bit careful. Uh, don't uh, miss, uh, you know, miscount any any signs. And your c here, our c here is 30. Okay, so you have you have this, and then over. 2 times a, so you have your 2 and your a is negative 4.9, okay? So, after you plug in the numbers through your calculator, you should get two numbers. One is positive 1.53 and the other one is negative 3.98 seconds. As you can see, our time should always be a positive value, it cannot be negative. So this solution basically is ruled out. So how much time that it requires to uh, go down from 30, minute, uh, 30 minutes to the ground, that will be 1.53 seconds. So we calculate the time to be 1.53 seconds, okay? So that answers the first question. And then you ask to find what is the velocity at the impact we have our initial, we have our time, we have our acceleration, so it becomes really, really straightforward to find the final velocity because your final velocity would just be that Vf is equal to Vi and then plus At. So your Vi is negative 12 and your A is negative 9.8 and your time is 1.53. So after you plug in the numbers, you should get negative 27 meters per second. And that negative sign should be included because vector is, because velocity is a vector. So it comes with the main two and direction. That negative just indicates that the directions of the, uh, of the object is downwards. Okay? All right?